Hello and welcome to episode one of a new campaign here on the channel where we are going to be playing the Nation of Greedy Grin. We are going back into the Serpent Spine, but this time we're doing something a little bit different. We are not dwarves. No, no, we are gobbos. It is time for the goblins to take over a very large chunk of the Serpent Spine. Uh, as our name may imply, Greedy Grin, we need to make a lot of money. And I'll just let you in on the little secret for what our final mission requirement is. Uh, we need 100,000 ducats. Yeah, so uh, this might go on for a little bit, and we need to make a lot of money, which means we're going to need to leave the Serpent Spine, most likely, and go and try and get control of the Raheni trade. Uh, but we'll get to that in time. Uh, in the beginning, we need to get over here to the gold hold. This will always have gold. It cannot be, it like can't go away. Uh, so we got to get over here and take that off of Verkugulan, but we have a couple things we need to do before then. Number one, we need to go to these expedition targets. Number two, I want to show strength on Segdir. Number three, I want to not die to these orcs. And number four, then we go over and we deal with them. Uh, I do kind of want to make sure in this campaign that I am taking my time a little bit more and explaining how some of the mechanics work, because I know that sometimes, I, I, you know, I've done it so many times that I just feel like I should just get through it really quickly, but some people may be wondering how everything works, and I should be explaining that more. All right, let's take a look at our national ideas here. So we have plus 0.1 yearly inflation reduction and minus 50% war taxes cost. We have 15% national tax, 10% siege ability, 20% looting speed, 10% production efficiency, minus 10% construction cost, minus 10% land maintenance modifier, minus 25% recruitment time, 10% trade efficiency, 20% caravan power, and finally 10% movement speed. Not bad, especially that inflation reduction. It's going to be really useful. We're going to need to go for economic ideas as well to get even more inflation reduction. Uh, it's going to be pretty important for us to do so. Our ruler is a 543 powerful mage from the start, and this is locked in every single time. Clan boss, frail tooth, greedy grin. Uh, and they are quite good at some magic. You're talented in divination and evocation and legendary in transmutation, which does open us up for possibly doing some enhance ability. Uh, we'll need some more monarch points to do that, but it is possible that we could increase our stats. Now, I'm not sure we really want to because he's so old. Uh, we could try and get a homunculus immediately, but I don't think it's actually worth the monarch points at the moment. I think we're going to be better off spending that on doing our expeditions. Uh, what we are going to do is focus mill because we are monstrous, which means we start off on tech 2, and the dwarves will be tech 3, and we want to make sure that we can catch up to them. Uh, we are in the Serpent Spine, so we are, of course, going to go Native Repression because you cannot avoid the natives in the Serpent Spine if you have this modifier, Reclaiming the Dwarvar. It gives you 50% Native Uprising chance and minus 150% Native Assimilation, so you might as well just get more Settlers. Uh, now, we are Gala Administration, which gives us minus 5% production, or minus, sorry, minus 5% dev cost, 10% production efficiency, minus 15% national tax, 20% spy network construction, 10% advisor cost, plus 10% diplomatic tech, but minus 10% mill tech. And we are Goblin Military, which gives us 20% national manpower, 15% manpower recovery speed and land force limit, minus 10% land maintenance cost, minus 10% artillery cost, minus 20% uh, Cav combat ability and galley combat ability, 10% reinforced speed and siege ability, 15% land fire damage, 10% fire and shock damage received, 5% special force, special unit force limit, and 10% morale damage received. We're very good at having lots of troops, and we need to bump up our manpower uh, and our force limit in order to really take advantage of what goblins are good at, as well as really, really doubling down on that fire damage. Once Tech 16 comes around, and we start getting over to cannons, we're going to be in a pretty good spot. If you also look at our unit pips here, starting at Tech 19, we start to really go hard into offensive fire, uh, and eventually we get up to some of, some, some of the best pips in the game. And we may get to these troops. I'm not sure. It's going to take us a while. Uh, our religion. We are Goblinistic Shamanism, which gives plus two tolerance of heathens and 10% looting speed. Uh, the original religion of most goblins, it is a polytheistic and shamanistic religion containing elements of ancestor worship and animism. It is a very diverse and fluid religion with each subgroup claiming their favorite gods are the most important and often taking over elements from the religions of subjugated and allied peoples. It is divided into multiple cults, which are seen as equally valid by the people, equally wrong by the philosophers, and equally useful by the magistrate. 
All right, so this gives us the ability to choose what we want to go with. And we will unlock more, uh, kind of like how animism works in the base game, when we interact with dwarves and elves and uh, all of those peoples, uh, we will gain new, like, gods and stuff. Uh, so we can go for early production efficiency, early dev cost, or land maintenance. Our land maintenance is already super, super cheap because of our dwarf our claimer modifier, which gives minus 75%. So I think, uh, I mean, production probably makes the most sense. We're not going to get like anything out of trade right now. Well, technically we make more out of trade than production. And remember, we're going to be migrating around to, uh, you know what? We'll get the dev cost just in case he lives long enough to where it's going to be useful. I don't think he will. Mm, yeah. Yeah, we'll do that. Doesn't really matter all too much. All right, right now we only have monstrous tribes, so we're going to give share of the spoils. We're going to give land rights. We're going to give greater autonomy. We're going to give larger tribal hosts. And we're going to sell seas. We can summon the diet. You want an army size of 75% the force limit? Well, that's great. Actually, that works out perfectly because we need an army 80% of the force limit. So cool. I will take that. All right, I think that's all the setup that we need to do. Uh, let's go ahead and migrate onto this expedition target. All right, let's see. What kind of an expedition do we have here? Gold and long. Not exactly what I was hoping for. So, expeditions. Let's go over them real quick. Uh, expeditions are promise modifiers that you can find inside the surface mine. We even have a second one over here in the shattered camp. When you fully control this province, that means that if it is a colony, it is fully done. Uh, it doesn't have to be your capital or anything like that. You just need to own it for yourself. You have to either core the province, colonize it, yada, yada, yada. Uh, then you can go into your natural decisions and you can open up the expedition menu. The expedition menu will give you a list of all available expeditions. So if we also own Shattered Camp as a core, uh, it would show up in this list. It will then tell you when you hover over it, the danger level, danger level and the length. Let's go ahead and click on this and go ahead and organize it. And you cannot lose the province. If you lose the province, it will delete all progress. So there are five tiers of danger. There is, well, technically there's six, but there's five base tiers. Uh, copper, silver, gold, mithril, no, sorry, Platinum and Mithril. Uh, and then Length is short, medium, long. There is one other one, uh, and that is Chromium. And it'll be Labyrinthian, Labyrinthian Length. But those are for special things that you'll find. Uh, over here, you will find the estimated loot. So right now, it says it'll be 1,000 to 1,800. This is, again, estimated. It's not exact. Uh, it's just, this number is important, though. We'll get to that. But don't pay too much attention to it. Uh, manpower, that has to do with our preparations. So when you go on these expeditions, you need to send manpower, you need to increase morale, you need to increase organization, you need to buy for supplies, and you need to pay people. You do need to pay the adventurers. Otherwise, well, they're probably not going to do much for you. Yeah, they're probably not going to do much. So let's go ahead and start our preparations. We will go with manpower. I always send 10,000 men. Uh, what? What? Wait, are those cav? Is that why we can't? Because you can only send infantry. Oh, yeah. Delete those. Delete those cav. We do not need them. Yep. Just build a bunch of troops up. Okay. Well, while those are going through, we can still start other preparations. Uh, so, we're going to have our manpower here. We could not have increased that. Okay. So, manpower, again, it's just putting straight troops in. Morale is based off of your army's morale. So right now we have 2.65, which means we start automatically with 2.65. And organization is based upon your discipline. So you can actually make yourself really, really good at doing these expeditions if you have advisors that increase your morale or your discipline. I especially like the discipline one, uh, but we don't have it, so not that big of a deal. And we couldn't afford it, even if we do. Uh, this is gold and long, so I am going to go ahead and decide to map the terrain. There are three options here. Drill the troops. 3% uh, organization, draft plans 9, and map the terrain is 15. Costs a certain amount of monarch points for each level, uh, 5, 15, 25. And there's not exact numbers on what you need, but I feel pretty confident with like 133 here for a long length. As for morale, we are going to need to raise that up quite a bit. 
Um, morale's a little bit different. You have two options that use monarch points, 5 and 15 for 0.5 morale and 1.5. And then you have upfront payments, which is 1,000 crown. Not 1,000, sorry. 100 crowns for 1.5. So if you have more money than monarch points, you could do that. But for now, we do not have that. So we're going to go ahead and give ourselves a bit of morale. And we're going to need more than that, I think. Well, yeah, it's long, so we should be careful. Uh, this is where you could buy supplies, and we will prepare supplies. You can either use mill points, admin points, or money. Uh, you always want to max out supplies, pretty much. Just always do it. It's just it's a good habit. Uh, and we'll do that when we get some more monarch points. And then we have party share. This is how much of this loot will go to the party. It's technically just loot that disappears, but it makes their morale drop slower. So you want to give them the party share. The number you're looking for is about 30% of the lowest estimated loot. That will mean that your morale drops at like the slowest pace for the best cost for you. Uh, so in this case, since it's a thousand, we're gonna need, we're going to need three hundred uh, party share. Three hundred party share. Right, let's go ahead and let some time pass. We are gonna go for speed five here since um, it's OPM and the Dwarvar. There's not much we can do. Not much we can do at the moment. And as this gets built up, then we can go back into our expedition. You can exit out of the preparation whenever it will save it. You can also reset preparations if you so need to. Uh, send another thousand troops. Prepare the supplies. Prepare the food, the equipment. There we go. We're already at 100%. We're going to raise the morale, I think, one more time. Eight is probably good. And we're going to send them off. All right. Start expedition. Always double check they have supplies. Because if they don't have supplies... They'll die pretty much immediately, and that is not <laughs> not something you want. Uh, when you go through this, these expeditions, you will get some event chains. They're not too long most of the time. Uh, the nice thing about this is it will give you a quick look at your current stats. So it tells you your manpower, morale, organization, and supplies left. It's good to keep an eye on these things. All right, uh, fungal bloom. The faint trickle of water echoes through the caves. Its soft reverberations caught by a gigantic fungal bloom, yellow and violet mold that has overgrown the caverns around us. The fungus glows faintly, a strangely soothing display of iridescence. As our first scouts enter the hall, the fungus shudders, sending waves through the mycelial crops. Soft, faint spores drifted away from the fungus and into the surrounding air. The scouts quickly step back out of fear the fungus might be deadly, but as they made the retreat, the bloom released more and more spores, triggering some kind of chain reaction that quickly started filling the entire cavern with the yellow glowing particles. As if that was not enough, some fungi started exuding a sickly green gas that mixed with the spores. I mean, if we were dwarves, we wouldn't risk it, but we're gobos, right? We're gobos, so maybe these spores aren't so bad. Uh, despite initial protests, the expedition leader decided to wait out the gas, but soon something strange stirred unrest. Slowly, people started coughing and then falling over, lying prone on the ground. A cleric immediately went up to them and tested for their pulse. With eyes closed, he counted the beat, but then got startled by a loud snore emanating from the fallen soldier. This was grounds for much confusion. What are these spores and gas? And most importantly, will they wake up? Lose 100 soldiers and 0.25 morale. Uh, one thing to keep in mind about some of these events is they will be written from the perspective of dwarves. So sometimes it doesn't really make sense, but it's good enough. Uh, glittering in the faint bioluminescence of the cavern walls lies a pool of clear, calm water, its surface like a mirror. Soon, the first soldier arrives at the shore, their water skins ready to be refilled. It is almost always worth it to try and refill supplies. You may lose troops, but the risk of running out of supplies is very high. But we feel reinvigorated. The cold water coats our throats and inspires us to go further. Press onwards, uncover the secrets that await our prying eyes and ears. 3% organization. Rather nice. Rather nice. All right, we seem to keep building up more troops. And now we are going deeper. So there's a couple things we need to talk about this. So your expeditions have levels, which you can track right here. Floor progress. Uh, obviously, the longer the expedition goes, the more floors it will go through, which means the more loot that you could possibly find. Uh, every time that you go deeper, you will gain some prestige. And while you are still in OPM, you have to be a One Province Miner you could have the chance to gain Ancient Dwarven Knowledge, which we will go over at the end of the vault, or at the end of the uh, expedition, sorry. And we will kind of talk about the benefits and what you can do with them. 
Uh, they are above us. The expedition enters a wide cavern full of stalactites while shimmering with strange minerals. Distracted by the unique beauty, they notice too late that there are no stalactites under the hanging counterpart. Then a veritable legion of piercers, larval ropers, descend from the ceiling like vultures, impaling the unsuspecting expedition. Pierce to the enemy. Our spears make quick process of the lurking larvae, impaling them before they can do much more damage to our troops. Soldiers stab around them with enough awareness to not hit their fellow explorers, trying to hit as many slithering creatures as possible. The frenzy comes to a close when the last piercers slither away and flee. 0.5 morale, 100 soldiers. Uh, remember, keep in mind, if you leave an expedition while they're on the expedition, you will lose everything. So don't migrate while you have an expedition out there hanging about. Not worth it. Not worth it. All right, going deeper. Good. Two more ancient dwarven knowledge. You really do want that stuff? Uh, there was something else. I can't remember off the top of my head. I'm sure it will come back to me. Oh, yeah. I'm not recruiting a general in drilling right now because our first mission will give us some army tradition. So I'm going to wait. I'm going to wait. I mean, we could just not pay for our troops as well. It won't save us much money, but it will save us a little bit. Nice. Three ancient dwarven knowledge. Good, good. Uh, let's see, we can't see our train note here. Once we see Segdir, then we'll be good. I really hope these orcs don't kill Virgo Gulan. That would kind of suck. That would be rather unfortunate. Going deeper? Nice. I guess I haven't even said what you can get out of the expeditions. You can get money and monarch points. So it is absolutely worth it to do them. 100,000 million percent you should do them. Uh, Eyes in the Dark. Over the past few sunless days, uh, sunless days deep in the Dwarvar, a strange gleaming eye has followed us. A seasoned bestiaris has identified the strange creature to be a Nothic. A mage who searched for the arcane has led them to a terrible curse that reduces them to nothing but a shadow, a husk of their former self. Now a guard, an explorer, and a mage stand before the expedition leader to debate what should be done with it. Uh, let's leave it alone. No secrets to be gained. The Nothic continued to stalk our expedition for some time, and it still haunts the sleepless nights of some of our men. The first night, when the eye was not seen at all, it merited a tenuous, straining watch, filled with gruesome thoughts of where the creature might be hiding now. As the days pass, however, we concluded that it was not in hiding, but simply left us behind. Whether it has learned our secrets or just lost interest, no one can say. Gain .5 morale and 5 organization. One of the best events you can actually get. That is a lot of morale and organization. I'm a little nervous. Look at our lack of supplies. We're at 38.6. That does make me a bit concerned about uh, the future of our boys here. And we're still going deeper. Another ancient dwarven knowledge. Okay, we're down to 31. A colony of mushroom people. Mushrooms and fungi are a common sight in the surface spine, and they make up a significant part of any dark dweller's diet. So much so, their entire manuals and archives full of the properties of the different mushrooms one can find in the depths. It is to no one's surprise, then, the mushrooms are also an integral part of any expedition team exploring the secrets of the old caverns, given the sheer number of mushrooms that can be found there. As a few explorers were picking some of these mushrooms from an easily accessible place, the most peculiar thing happened. From the dark emerged a group of strange, roughly humanoid shapes with wide-brimmed hats. As they come closer, it became apparent that they were some kind of living mushrooms. Mushrooms of similar species that we were just picking. More food, or these could be some fun guys. I mean, I can't pass up a good pun. I can't pass up a good pun. A good trip with the mushrooms. Despite the damp and spongy look of the mushroom caps, they felt more like velvet, at least according to the group of soldiers returning from their gathering tour. Many of them just couldn't help themselves except to give these strange creatures some pats, which they, in turn, seemed to appreciate. Nevertheless, the soldiers seem to be much more upbeat now that they have interacted with the things. Gain one whole morale. Now, your organization and morale affects how likely it is that you succeed in these. There's a dice roll that happens every time you click one of these options, for the most part. Some do have set in stone things that will happen, good or bad, uh, but most of the time it's just a dice roll. Uh, almost out of nowhere, a gigantic army of goblins descended upon us, crawling out of every nook and cranny, every small tunnel and crevice around us, with spit fletched teeth and crude yet painful weapons. They scream in anger, preparing for their attack, striking fear into the eyes and hearts of our explorers. Death to the Greenskins, or let's see if they want to join our tribe. Now, there are certain events in the expedition system that you can get special outcomes based upon... Anything from your administration, like us, to idea groups that you've unlocked, uh, the amount of innovativeness you have, uh, all kinds of stuff. So 
it could be a little bit different for every playthrough. And in this case, there's a chance that we can convince these goblins to join us. And it seems they have a great clan for all. The goblin army has agreed to peaceful terms as befitting such an advanced civilization as us. In the masterfully crafted treaty, they generously donate some supplies while we offer them the safety of being part of Daz Outlet. We lose three organization, but we gain 500 soldiers and 5% supplies. Not bad. A pretty good trade. Pretty good trade. All right. Is, uh, is, I would say, unfortunate that our first one was long. Having your first expedition be gold and medium is usually a pretty good stuff. Wow. Okay. Uh, it is said that there are regions even below the lowest caverns known to dwarf and goblin kind. Tales of strange creatures, gigantic towering shrooms. If that is the case, then this might be the wound to which we could penetrate rock and earth and gain access to these lands. But perhaps not. What is the case is that in a recent expedition, the men had to stop and go elsewhere because of a yawning abyss stretched out in front of them that, due to its unbelievable size, proved impossible to pass. The expedition leader made a mental note, and when he returned, told the administration, interested in what this chasm might hold, another expedition was created with the sole purpose of exploring this chasm. For if you gaze long into the abyss, the abyss eases back into you. Alrighty, the expedition returns. As the explorers, mercenaries, adventurers, clerics, warriors, and colonists return, they are hailed as heroes. They bring with them coffers full of gold and ancient artifacts and parade through the streets of Death's Outlet. So, you can repay them in full and let them rest, where all of the manpower that you had on that expedition that you have left at the very end will be put back into your manpower pool, or you could just send those troops immediately back out. Now, it does round down to the nearest thousand, so in this case, we will only get 9,000 troops back. Uh, we also gained 547 crowns and 182 of each monarch point. Very, very nice. And here is the ancient dwarven knowledge. The expedition has returned with ancient dwarven knowledge. The master engineers request exclusive access to this knowledge, believing its, or its technical knowledge could help better develop our hold. However, the scholars wish for it to ex wish for it exclusively for themselves too, for they claim the wisdom of the elders in the precedence of managing a large state like was all Dwarov could be applied to better workings of our state as a whole. This is one of those things where it's, it's written in the perspective of a dwarf, but we can still take advantage of it. So we can store nine ancient Dwarven knowledge we found to improve holds, which means when you develop a hold, it will get two development instead of one uh, for nine times, or you can go for each ancient Dwarven knowledge gets converted into government reform progress. I almost always take government reform progress. It's almost always a much, much better decision to do, especially for Dwarven adventures. Definitely do that one. But for us, even still, we're going to take that because that's going to give us our first government reform, which while it is just tribal stuff, is still worth it for the most part. Get more national manpower. And look at that. It puts us pretty far into our second one as well. All right. So we now have 20,000 troops. Uh, let me go ahead and build up to 30. And let's migrate over into here. Wow, lots of expeditions. Okay. Not complaining. Not complaining at all. Uh, what is this expedition looking like here? What is this expedition looking like? Oh, right. We have to pay for our troops. You have to be at full maintenance. Festivities? I will gladly gain one stability. Thank you. There we go. There's a general of 40 tradition. Wow. That is a good general. Traveling minstrel. Oh, okay. Two stability for us, I guess. Uh, a hold of gold. Total army size at least 80% of the force limit. We have information about a dwarven hold that is said to be entirely made of gold. Although the rumor is probably exaggerated, even a trace of truth is tantalizing. We should go see for ourselves and capture whatever wealth remains. Five army tradition. We will discover the Virkul Gulan area and get a permanent claim on Virkul Gulan. So that is here. These bad boys in the gold hold, which has the gold hold modifier, which means minus 20% local goods produced, but minus 100% chance of local gold depletion chance. Very, very nice. And it has minus 20% local dev cost till 1464. Good to know. Good to know. All right, let's do this expedition. What do we got? It's platinum difficulty, medium length. That is a little nerve wracking. Especially for uh, low loot levels. But very well. Uh, send 10,000 troops. Go ahead and raise morale up to 8.6. We will organize up to... Yeah, let's go to here. Let's go to 139. Supplies always max out. We'll focus on admin here for a moment. Do one mil click. 
The rest could be admin. Uh, set the party share. It needs to be 300. It rounds... Does it round down or up? I, get, I can't remember off the top of my head. I'm going to have to look that up. Uh, we're going to play it safe, though, and round up. All right. So that is good there. Supplies, yes. Troops, yes. Yep, go for it. Start the expedition. Awesome. Uh, and we actually cannot drill yet because we're still tech two. So we're going to buy that down. Uh, ancient war golem. While digging, our miners uncovered what they believe to be a large mithril statue, but further inspection and excavation has revealed something very different. It's a dormant war golem buried for over a thousand years. So for three crowns, we can get shock damage and shock, more shock damage, and my 2.5% shock damage received until 1460. We can gain money and monarch points, or we can gain prestige and innovativeness. Let's go for money and monarch points here. Those mill points sounded pretty good. Pretty good. Now, I did say that I want to show strength on Stegdir, and we still may, but there's also an argument to be made to just kill him. Just straight up. Just go in, take him out, leave it be. Um, I'm not sure if we want to, though. Uh, a great cavern opens up in front of the expedition leader, small streams of water trickling down the natural stairs carved out by long past tectonic activity. After a few steps down, the water converges to a lake surrounded by greater-than-life mushrooms. Their stalks glow violet, and the caps extrude a dizzying smell, but not necessarily in a bad way. At their feet are more colonies with smaller mushrooms with up to many different colors. We do need the food. Ooh, violet fever. The cook stood up a meal with great excitement. They had finally gotten a new ingredient to try out for the evening meal after months of relying on dried stored provisions. At first, the dinner seemed excellent, but soon the mushroom's poison took hold of the expedition. A raging sickness, dubbed the Violet Fever due to the ugly discoloration of the skin and bulging pustules, swept through the expedition. Few of the infected survived, and those that do still suffer from the damage to the poison rot. Well, you know what? You lose some troops and then trying to get some food and everybody calls you a bad guy. Uh, also, that's... Yes, 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 yes. Uh, that event that talked about the depth, the yawning depth into the center of the earth or whatever. Uh, that is one of the special dungeons that you can find. The, these are the chromium difficulties and or chromium difficulty, difficulties, whatever it is, and labyrinthian length. So we're going to have to come back to this one day, um, not anytime soon. All right, they are above us. We already read that one. So if we've already read it before, I'm just going to click through it because, I mean, we read through it. Uh, decadence, we lose the stability. Is what it is. Is what it is. 613 air. Uh, I'm not gonna lie, I'm not thrilled by that idea. Now, I think we might flip into a republic at some point. I don't know if that's true or not. We may just want to, though, even if it doesn't force us to. Because republics for goblins are really, really good. Really, really good. Especially for... Uh, with our religion because then we can switch it out every couple of years So I think we'll just leave the kid for now and keep the prestige. We will take this mill tech uh, But we'll save up for these ones. So you can start to drill go ahead and pay for the troops We can make some money and that will be all good yeah, Another expedition here going deeper. Okay Would like to get over here to stop this Because uh, I would like to get rid of these two or at least get rid of this province and make this my capital. But we'll see if we can pull that off. We'll see, we'll see, we'll see. Now, Segdir is only going to field maybe 11,000 troops. Uh, odds are they will be allied with Azkasur, though, at the very least. Uh, Gelatinous Cube. The caverns through which their expedition travels are normally abundant with dust, mushrooms, and all other odd things one may find deep within the serpent spine. For the last few days, the caverns have been suspiciously clean, however, featuring spotless smooth stone. This has alerted some of the more seasoned members of our expedition to the possible danger. The infamous Gelatinous Cube, a mindless creature made of oozing gel in the shape of a cube, scouring empty hallways like a large garbage disposal, digesting whatever junk they pick up with their potent acid. And sure enough, after a few more hours, our scouts report a floating chests and swords further along the path, suspended within the almost translucent gelatinous mass of the cube. A few soldiers, clad in whatever protective gear they could find, approach the creature now for further inspection. They argue how to go about this situation, putting two possible possibilities in front of the expedition leader. 
dispose of the cube entirely by burning it to the ground, or try to retrieve the loot from within the cube without danger of harming the treasure. I mean, our name is Greedy Grin. So therefore, greed is good. Attempt to retrieve the loot. Slimy loot. The unfortunate soldiers that were tasked with retrieving the loot from the cube shuddered upon the thought of having to reach within the slimy mass out of their own volition. After some heavy encouraging and promising them a greater share of the spoils, one brave soul finally committed to the deed. He covered his arm with as much cloth as possible, tying it tightly to him, and reached inside. Despite all precautions, he could still feel a faint sizzling, but managed to pull some of the surface treasure out. The chests and weapons are still covered in the slime and ooze of the cube, however, and he refuses to clean them on the basis that he has done enough already. 0.5 morale and 50 loot. A worthy trade in my eyes. Just one goblin in pain giving me 50 loot? Worth. Worth, okay? Sacrifices must be made for the good of, uh, well, me. Yeah. As long as I get the loot, I don't really care. Uh, Deep Rothay, nice. The Rothe is a curious creature living both in the light above and the dark below. They are an excellent animal, they are strong, their meat is tender, and their disposition is agreeable. It is therefore no wonder that the serpent spine once housed many of these beasts. Nowadays, most are imported from the surface, but some of them manage to survive the tunnels and caves on their own. A herd of these are just ahead, their fur long and tangled, their horns spiraling along their heads. They would make an excellent addition to our diet, but who knows what strength they possess if they survived here. Well, we only have 27.5% of supplies left, so we're going to have to go for it. Uh-oh. Rage of the Beasts. It takes considerable strength to survive this deep in the surface spine, and we should have known that from our own experiences. Although the Rothe eventually went uh, to the chopping block, they did not leave our numbers unscarred. The raw power of their crushing hooves and piercing horns has felled more than their fair share. Gain 10% supplies for 200 soldiers? Absolutely. No, we can replace 200 gobbles. That's not a big deal. We make more gobbles really fast. That's like our whole thing. You know, but 200 loot? Well, that can't... Wow. Really? We found another dungeon? Right next to the other one? Okay. Uh, the Riz Vembrathar. We thought it was a normal cave like any other, and in its own way it was normal for the serpent spine. Unassuming, but on closer inspection, full of wonder and danger alike. The first body was roasted alive by flames emitted by hidden runes, the second by ice spikes, also by runes. The third party was smart enough to bring a runesmith, and we discovered the entire cavern was filled with various rune-based traps, arrayed in a defensive formation. Thankfully, they did find a path large enough to safely traverse, and ended up coming into sight of a massive sealed vault door, engraved with a warding rune, and reinforced with adamantine. It's obvious that whatever lay beyond that door was worth protecting, so that simply leaves the question, what wonders await inside? Alright, we get 542 monies and 180 of each monarch point. That is going to cap us out on our... Oh no, it's not. We're good. We're good, right? We can save a bunch of monarch points here. Go ahead and complete that, and Ancient Dwarven Knowledge will be converted into Government Reform Progress, which we can turn to... Lip service, why not? Uh, we're trying to get down here as fast as we can so we can reform into a republic and whatnot, because that is rather good for us. All right, so we found another... Uh... Well, that's a bug. That should not be showing up there. <laughs> that's supposed to be over there. All right, uh, let's migrate to the next spot. Okay, and let's do this expedition. It is mithril and short, so it's going to be very difficult... But it's not going to last very long. So let's send 10,000 men. Uh, again, always, always, always send max supplies. You literally cannot have enough supplies. We will organize the troops up to 145. And we will raise morale. I mean, we can go for 7. They hopefully shouldn't need more than that. We'll set party share to... 100. It's not going to be enough to... Ah, we're going to give 200 just to be safe. So in this case, the total costs have outweighed the minimum amount we're going to get. So if it happens that the expedition returns before they get enough loot, we do have to make up the difference. So just keep that in mind. We will have to make up that difference, but I think we'll get enough. We'll see. We'll see. Build five more troops. Uh, go ahead and cancel one of them, though. There we go. Uh, we could take tech. There's not any reason to do it, though. Uh, great mushrooms? Sure. These ones were edible compared to the uh, poisonous ones last time. Now, most of these episodes are going to be about 30 minutes long. We'll go a little bit longer for the first one because I like doing that. Um, and they'll come out every day, pretty much, except for Fridays. 
uh, you should see a new episode, unless I miss a day, which is technically possible, but hopefully uh, will not happen. All right, uh, Lost Malfunctioning Golem. After around every corner of the Summer Spine, there might be another secret, another adventure, or another relic of its long history. Those relics may be long broken, but sometimes they are just resting. As metal scrapes on stone and faint whining of gears reverberates from the walls, a towering figure appears in front of a forward expedition. An iron golem stands tall, its body ready to fight intruders once again. At least, what it thinks are intruders. <laughs> now, because we are uh, kobolds, or not kobolds, sorry, we are goblins or kobolds, if you're one of the two, you can actually just run through its legs and not fight it, but there's a chance we get loot if we do fight it, so we're going to fight it. Uh, crushed metal, broken gears. The golem's torso crashes to the ground, sending shocks through the surrounding caves. Springs and gears get ejected as its protective shielding fails. A last wisp of steam escapes the broken surface as the golem is defeated. 75 loot, 0.5 morale, lose 150 soldiers. And we get 50 mil power, too. Nice. Going deeper. Wow, three ancient dwarven knowledge. Very nice. Very good. Go to here. They may finish this in time. And then we just have to take these provinces, but again, I'd rather not do that rather not, but I also don't want to miss out on an opportunity to fight Segdir here. Uh, pitch Black Darkness. The caverns deep in the surface spine are usually lined with luminescent plants, fungi, and other sources of ambient light, but there are some parts where no light pierces the darkness, places of eternal gloom, where some of the most dangerous monsters house. As the expedition enters one of these dark stretches, a Gru, a terrifying monstrosity of the dark, attacks. Unseen Horror. One by one, one by one, the monstrosity picked out the soldiers. Muffled screams from the darkness alluded to the horrific beings stalking us. One by one, our numbers diminished until far too many were lost. If we run back now, all will be for naught, the expedition leader exclaimed. But not a second later, he was taken in by the Gru, sending the rest of the expedition fleeing. Only a few returned from the darkness into the safe light. The darkness of the serpent spine has claimed so many lives in the past, and now it has taken its due once more. Let us huddle in the torchlight and be ever grateful for it. Lose one morale and 350 soldiers. Not an insignificant amount. <laughs> Not an insignificant amount. Uh, an ancient door. Are you serious? After a long journey through the darkened tunnels in a remote region of the surface spine, your group eventually arrives at a large grotto, where an underwater current passes by an old, richly ornate door of impressive size. What could it be? The expedition returns, and we will send them back out. 250 monies, 83 of each monarch point. So we found another one of the great projects. That's insane. We got three of them all next to each other. That is not how that's supposed to go. That is incredibly lucky. All right. I love that. That's that's great. That's great. Uh, build up two more troops. Migrate here. Segdir is tech four. He is allied to Askus, sir, who will join. We are tech three. But with overwhelming numbers, we might be able to beat him. Now, here's the thing. If I go and take him out right now, one, the elves will not be able to enter the surface spine. If we leave them alive, it's possible that Jad or uh, Sarian make their way inside. But two, we could go and steal feudalism. And I think that's probably worth it. The other option would be waiting to go over to Virkal Gulan to steal feudalism and doing a show strength here. I mean, we can do a show strength here, but we can't do a show strength here. So I think we just go for it. We just go for it. This is going to be a rough one, though. If we need to murk up, we can murk up. We also have a really good general, so that helps. All right, let's do a Humiliate Rival War, and we will move in to their capital, try and fight them before they can group up with their allies, and it seems they are going to get the upper hand on that one. Okay, uh, hire the Mercs up then, and let's retreat. I should have hired that Morale of Armies guy. Yeah, we lost 12,000 troops there. That's okay. As long as they are not actively moving towards us, we'll be fine. Uh, are we going to be able to get our morale back here? Yes, we are. Okay, build me some more troops. We can still win this, no problem. We have the money to go over our force limit, so I'm not too worried. Okay, we're going to have to move over one cavern at a time. One cavern at a time, or we're going to run out of morale and die. 
Uh, so we have to be a little careful about this. There we go. So now we can make our way back into our home. There we go. All of our troops are back together. So now they'll start recovering their manpower a little bit more. Uh, we'll go speed five here while we're waiting, and I will start to build a spy network here. Oh, they're tech five now? Oof. Oof, oof, oof. That's rough. That's very rough. Now I'm a little bit less confident in this war. I will not lie to you. Uh, we're still going to go for it, though. Still going to go for it. Elves. Yeah, we're going to have to find a way to bait them off of this hold. Because they get plus two here. Or technically, I get minus two. Uh, what we're going to do is make sure that we are not going over the combat width. Which is 20 right now. So we need to split you in half. Pretty much. There we go. Make sure you all move together with our really good general, and these will be our reinforcements. Make sure that we are not going at too fast of a speed. Uh, disconnect from there, connect up to the goblin horde. There we go. So let's go occupy this. Yeah, they are all standing there. Oh, and Askasur is a great conqueror. I mean, that doesn't really make a difference in this case. It kind of does, but not super a lot. How am I going to beat them here? That is the question. I could just wait for Tech 4. We're not that far off from it. Yeah, you know what? That's what we're going to do. We're just going to wait for Tech 4. Because I don't think there's a world in which we beat them Tech 3 to Tech 5. And they're about to finish this colony. Which actually benefits us a lot. Because now I can scorch this. And if they move in to unsiege it, then we will be the ones with the advantage uh, instead of them. Or at the very least, they won't have a plus two. Right, there we go. There's tech four. So now we'll have a little bit better of a chance. Let's back up. Let's see if they take the bait and move in. Nope. They don't. Okay. Well, we're going to have to beat them on here then. We're going to have to reinforce pretty well in order to make this happen. All right. Uh, yeah, I think we got this. I think we'll be all right. Cool. And Ancestor God. So this is a new religion. Uh, the dwarves we have conquered seem to possess a strange way of venerating their ancestors. Though those wretches are obviously not worthy of any respect, given goblins ruled the serpent's spine long before they arose, it has inspired a renewed appreciation of our own ancestors. We unlock a new cult. Now, we are going to follow Askasur out into the deserts. Oh, we can't go all the way out, though. Darn. Okay, then just focus on getting this siege done. Focus on getting this siege done. Uh, let's group you together and fully consolidate. There's no reason to be super far over our force limit. We'll stay three over for now. And that should mean that Askasur is not going to mess with us anymore. We'll see if Segdir can even bring their troops back. Because if they get into a fight out here somewhere, that may be the end of them. Because these Serpent Spine natives got hands. For sure, 100%. Uh, we can go speed 5 here. Because, well, there's no way for me to micro this war more. Uh, we can take you guys out. And then we have a full combat width on the siege. That'll make it a little bit better. Askasur has a fort that has been built up now. Uh, that'll be a little bit harder to siege down. Uh, not the end of the world, though, for sure. 35%? Nope. 49%? Nope. 57%? Nope. <laughs> uh, there was another thing I could have done. I could have used our war magic, because we actually are uh, somewhat good at evocation, which would give us more morale of armies. I'm not too worried about it, though, uh, since we did end up winning. All right, now we siege down Askasur, and I do want to get them out as soon as possible, but, I mean, if I can... Get some money out of them, I'll take it. Uh, we are near our maximum admin power. We're going to have to take tech here. Or I could stab up. No, I'd rather take the tech. I'd rather take the tech. It's not the most efficient use of monarch points, but that's okay. Oh, for a second I got scared that we got attacked here. I saw those troops going. I was like, no! <laughs> Please! Not this way, not this way. Uh, cheaper mill tech cost. I mean, a little late for cheaper mill tech cost, not gonna lie. But thank you for the thought. Appreciate it. It's the thought that counts. Come on. 
There we go. Ascusur's capital has fallen. You will give me your war reps. You will give me your money. I'm going to... I don't care about pillaging your capital. You're going to break your alliance with Segdir and with Virko Gulan. Okay, just break it with Virko Gulan then. Well, nah. Let's go kill him. Can you tell me there's another fort here? There sure is. We got this fort up. Okay, we go step on this. That should get them out of the war. Cool. They break both of their alliances and they give us money. Awesome. Thank you. We lost a lot of gobos in this, but hey, that's just the gobbo way, baby. Let's go. We can afford to take losses. The dwarves cannot. All right, and we will show strength here because uh, we'll get a humiliate off on Virko Gulan. Perfect. Thank you. I wasted diplo points there. That's okay. All right, uh, let's keep on migrating on over towards Virkul Gulan. Sagdir like Nasus' arrival. Yeah, well, we're out of here now, punk. Uh, combine together. Just stop paying for the troops for now. I don't really want to delete these mercs at the moment uh, because we could use them against Virkul Gulan pretty effectively here. In fact, I'm already 46 minutes in. I think we might be able to push over here and take out Virko Gulan. It's going to be for a rather long first episode, uh, but that's that's okay. That's okay. Now, they did take this, which means, unfortunately, we are going to have to... Mm, he who... The, uh, the dwarves. Yeah. Yeah, it's not really going to be an option. We've got to go take him out. Is what it is. All right, migrate. Good, there's no expeditions here to tempt me into going towards them. I shall not be tempted. Oh, boy. Hey, orcs. How you doing? Let's be chill, man. Let's be... Ooh, my general died. Hey, orcs. Let's, uh, let's be chill, man. Pay for the troops. I do not want to fight them. They would hurt a lot with the 3,000 cavalry. I would rather not fight the orcs. We can deal with them later. We fight later, yeah? You just go down towards Segdir. Take Segdir out. Please. They're weak right now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Those dwarves? <laughs> Pathetic. Even we beat them. All right, bye. <laughs> All right. Virko Gulan, defending against Jadari and the conquest of lofty winds. Well, seems that we got to get in here and get this done immediately. Uh, take the siege of Virko Gulan and move on to Virko Gulan. Hopefully they're not standing there. They are not. Awesome. Leave these mercs behind. Cool. And then we're just going to keep all of our troops here. Pretty much. We'll leave 20. We don't need all of them. But I do want to leave a full full front line. Absolutely. All right. You two are going to move over into this Terra Incognita. Uh, apparently we cannot because it's a colony. Uh, that's rather annoying. Can I take that in the peace deal? Yes, I can. Okay. Well, that's less than stellar. Hey. Hey, orcs. <laughs> Hi. How's it going, bud? Um, you want to wanna be friends? There's a wall breach. And we're not going to take anything outside. That's, that's bad. No outside allowed for us. No outside allowed for us. We're only staying inside. Come on, take it. Come on, take it. 35%, I believe. I believe. There we go. There's 72% war score. We can take those three. We can take money. We can not humiliate because I forgot to rival them. That is the big sad. Uh, but that's all right. Move out. Definitely should have uh, rivaled them here, without a doubt. Uh, seeking counsel from the ancestors. There are always more decisions to be made in the rule of Greedy Grin and always many voices seeking to guide them. But the clan boss has a much better idea than listening to their advisors' disparate voices. Why not reach out to the clan's founders to be certain we are following in their footsteps? The shamans prepare a ritual at once. The only question is what kind of spirit we should reach out for. Uh, let's go for the counsel from a great and just ruler for the Avon points. I like a bit of Avon points. All right, we take this. We take war reps. Uh, don't care about that. Don't care about that. Do I care about this? No, it's not worth the diplo points. 
Nah, we're good. All right. Boom. There we go. There is feudalism. We will embrace it immediately and take a couple of Diplo techs. And now we'll save our Monarch points up to develop the Renaissance here. And then we'll be able to take these decks, and it will be sweet and awesome. Alrighty, uh, so we need to start coring both of those, and we need to get rid of the dwarves. Those dwarves cannot be sitting in our hold, so we're going to go to Racial Tolerance, we're going to go to dwarves, and we're going to say, sorry, uh, you've got to go. You have done the same thing to us, so you can't even be mad. And look at that, they already built, or already started a colony for us, which is rather nice. Uh, so go ahead and send that out. Leave a full front line over there. Take four troops away. Bring you all back. And just like that, we are pretty set up for the future. Uh, but that is going to be end of the first episode. Oh, there's more dwarves. Okay, good to know. Um... It is the first episode of the series, so I would like to ask to like the video and comment down below if you are excited for it. It does help with a good old algorithm pushing the video out to other people. And subscribe. You know, you can even hit that bell for notifications if you want to be updated when I post. Uh, videos will go live every day except for Fridays at 8 a.m. Pacific Standard Time. Uh, so you can look forward to that one. If you didn't know, I also stream on Twitch. You can find that link down below in a Discord if you want to go ahead and hang out there. That would be super cool as well. Uh, but that is going to do it for today. I would like to thank you all for watching, and I hope to see you in the next one.